Okay, the next thing we're going to discuss are root tables and internet gateways, which tie in with designing our highly available cost efficient fault tolerant scalable systems, which we have talked about before. That it is a very important area, this section two, as it is 60% of the uh, exam that you will uh, hopefully be undertaking soon for the solutions architect. So root tables in, in internet gateways, which also tie in with NAT addresses. A couple of things here to note, your VPC has an implicit router. Your VPC automatically comes with the main root table. You see here that you can modify it. Uh, there's a custom root table. You, uh, you can create custom root tables for your VPC. And each subnet must be associated with a root table, which controls the routing for the subnet. If you don't explicitly associate a subnet with a particular root table, subnet uses the main root table. Um, now this is a lot to take in, so I think we will jump to the next slide. And this is the important concept to take out of the entire NAT instances and root tables. and um, internet gateways. Now you're almost certain to see at least one network address translation question on the exam. Something like how for instance can you connect an instance from a private subnet to the internet? For example you want to you have a private subnet and it's all well and good you don't want, really want anyone in there doing anything you're just going to use it within your organization however it suddenly dawns on you that um, you need to have some software updates for the system and the only way to do it, well, the easiest way to do it is to get a connection to the internet. So you could create a special NAT instance in a public subnet in your virtual private cloud to provide controlled outbound connectivity to instances in the private subnet or restricting all inbound traffic. Basically what they're trying to tell you is if you have a private subnet and it needs to get out to the internet, the way to do that is through a NAT instance using the internet gateway and route tables. Very important. And another um, equally important diagram, very similar to uh, first one we saw. And the following figure illustrates the NAT instant basics. The main root table, this one, sends the traffic from the instances in the private subnet to the NAT instance in the public subnet. The NAT instance sends the traffic to the internet gateway for the VPC. Traffic is attributed to the elastic IP address of the NAT. The NAT instance specifies a high port number for the response if a response comes back, then that instance sends it to an instance in the private subnet based on the port number for the response. Uh, that's probably, I hope, I don't regret saying this, but inconsequential to um, this exam. I don't think they're going to start talking to you about high port numbers. Again, the basic concept of what they're trying to get across and which they will quiz you on is if you have a private subnet and it doesn't have a connection to the internet, how do you go about it? That is how you do it. So this is a sort of question they will throw at you. You have just launched an instance into a VPC private subnet. All security, NACL and routing definitions are configured correctly. Which of the listed answers is the correct step needed if you now want to configure a new custom NAT instance? The NAT instance should have public IP address configured. The NAT instance should have an elastic IP address configured. The source destination check should be disabled. The NAT instance should be launched in a private subnet. Um, now, pretty much the NAT instance should have public IP address configured. Because 
but we need a public IP address to get out. And that instance should have a public IP address configured. Now, instances that you launch in a private subnet in a virtual private cloud can't communicate with the internet. Again, I've said this ad nauseum, but this is a concept that needs to be committed to memory. And you can optionally use a network address translation instance in a public subnet in your VPC to enable instances in the private subnet to initiate outbound traffic to the internet, but prevent the instances from receiving inbound traffic initiated by someone on the internet. Worth going back and having a look, I guess, at uh, the diagram again. I think this is the one that explains it the best. You have a private subnet. It doesn't have a connection to the internet. By default, how do you get a connection from a private subnet out to the internet? You create a special NAT instance in a public subnet. That's what you do.